Um, so, yeah, you're all welcome uh, this afternoon for me, morning or evening, depending on, on where you are. So we're going to be looking at uh, how you can use Oracle's converged AI database to pick a good wine um, from the data. So using machine learning and, uh, and various different kind of features within the database, but also using uh, SQL Developer to be able to uh, do an awful lot of the work for you. Yeah, so uh, my name is Brendan Tierney. If you, if you don't know me, I'm an Oracle Ace Director and a Groundbreaker Ambassador. I've been working with the Oracle database for quite a while now. So it's kind of 27 plus years, which makes me feel really old. So it kind of the beard helps to, uh, with, with that particular aspect. So, um, and you know, most of that time has been working in the area of big data analytics and machine learning kind of before it was actually called any of those phrases. So we also have Charlie Berger. Charlie, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, Charlie Berger here. As I said at the beginning, I'm Senior Director of Product Management for uh, Machine Learning at Oracle. Uh, I've been at Oracle since uh, Oracle acquired a bunch of us from a company called Thinking Machines in 1999, and we've been sort of stem selling algorithms deep, deep inside the database. We'll talk about that. And before that, I was at some other uh, statistical and data analysis companies for another 10 or 15 years or so. So I've been in this uh, field for for quite a while, and I'm have the pleasure of working with some other uh, you know experts here. So this is uh, this will be fun. Okay, and Jeff, I've been doing work with database tools since uh, 2001. So for the last decade, that's been Oracle SQL Developer, and uh, I've also been working with uh, Oracle REST Data Services or ORDS, um, which Brandon's going to highlight at the tail end uh, of our session. If you can't find me online, it's because you're not looking very hard. Just Google Jeff Smith Oracle. I'm, I'm all over the place. And these Twitter accounts here are product specific um, accounts that we run that do not have my personal life intertwined. So pure uh, tech and news and updates on SQL Dev, SQL CL, or, or awards. Okay, so Charlie, do you want to tell us a little bit about the Converge database and how AI fits into it? Sure. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, today we're going to do a fun, you know, scenario. I, in Boston, we're still, you know, drinking coffee, I think, maybe. But uh, Brendan uh, and, and all of us over the years have been doing a lot of research uh, in preparation for this because we're going to use a simple example about analyzing wine. It's just some Kaggle data. It's very simple. It's very fun. There's, there's other versions of it that include text and such. But the point is, all of this analysis that you might otherwise be doing uh, in Python, R, TensorFlow, a bunch of SAS, SPSS, a bunch of different things. Um, over the years, the database has been adding all these different features and including machine learning. So this is at the last Oracle open world. And I always like to show a slide that has, you know, Larry in it. I actually took this picture sitting way up in front. Um, and there's Larry talking about the converged database. And if you look at this, it's got multi-tenant, in-memory, sharding, JSON, and so on. Other vendors over the years have come out with different startups, different vendors have come out with different dedicated platforms to do any one of these different things, including, for example, machine learning. At Oracle, starting way back in 1999, as I mentioned, we said, it makes no sense, at least in the area of machine learning, I think in all of these areas, to take and move the data from your data storage, your data repository, to kind of take it out of the file cabinet and move it over some, to some other location to do some processing, it makes a lot more sense to just see if you can't do that processing in the database. So we've, over the last 20 years, we've taught the database how to do machine learning. There's something like 30 plus algorithms that are native implementations that we expose as what they are, SQL functions. They're written in C code, like all the rest of the database functionality, and they are um, exposed to SQL functions. But also, um, one of the most interesting things is many of these features, and I think many of the ones up there, I guess, they're all, they're all free in the database too. So as of December 5th, 2019, Oracle made the uh, decision to make uh, machine learning and also the spatial and graph features free inside the database. So there's a lot of things uh, that are all in the database. So you can not move the data, do 100% processing in the database in this now multifaceted, you know, Swiss army knife of features and functionality that is now called the Oracle, call it converged database. Now, with that at Oracle Open World, Oracle also announced a new mission statement. And um, like the kid on, uh, I think the movie was Sixth Sense um, with Bruce Willis, and he says, I see, you know, 
dead people. For me, I look at this, discover insights, unlock endless possibilities, and I see machine learning, right? Because what else are you gonna do with all that data? Of course, you're gonna put it to good use. You're gonna try and find a good bottle of wine for cheap, right? So that's what we're gonna do today. Back to you, Brendan. Yeah, so when you go about some of these projects is that what we see here is the diagram on the right-hand side within the circle. It's known as the Christie M life cycle, which is the cross-industry process model for data mining. So this is a process that's used quite a lot you know, within kind of projects. So what we're gonna go through today is an example of kind of taking some of the steps from this process and being able to use the Oracle database and SQL developer uh, along with a couple of other kind of uh, products like Apex and, and um, uh, Ords to be able to build out a solution. So, you know, the first thing is, well, we need to import data, we need to explore it, we need to understand it before we can actually move on to the machine learning aspects of it. So what I'm gonna do now is gonna ask Jeff to show us using SQL Developer to perform some of these early uh, steps of you know importing the data and, ex and exploring it. So Jeff. So Jeff, I'll stop sharing for you. Oh no, just use the slides. I'm gonna to talk right. to the slides that you have. Right. So if you're new to SQL Developer, uh, welcome. This is our database integrated development environment for SQL and PL SQL. And it's also our graphical user interface for all things Oracle. It's absolutely free. It's included with your database license. It's a Java application, so it's gonna work on your Mac, on your Windows machine, or even your uh, Linux VM. You could throw it in a Docker, I guess, but that seems kind of weird. But anywhere you can run Oracle Java, you're gonna be able to run SQL Developer. You don't need a, an Oracle client or even a TNS names um, file to connect. What you do need is an Oracle database. And um, if you're brand new to Oracle database, welcome. Uh, in SQL Developer here on this right-hand side, you have where it says getting started. And we have three links. So you have an Oracle VirtualBox appliance. That's what I use. That is something you can run for free again. And it stands up an Oracle Linux virtual machine that already has Oracle Database 19C Enterprise Edition with all of the features on and configured out of the box. You also have Oracle Application Express or Apex as the cool kids call it. You have Oracle REST data services in it. And one of the biggest things that we've done in there is we've loaded hands-on labs and all of the demo schemas in there. So it's got like the sales history schema in there and all kinds of other stuff. So there's existing data in a database you can just immediately connect them and plug into. And, there's and also Jeff, a link there. And Jeff, that's, yep. that's what the hands-on labs, some of the hands-on labs will point to that, correct? The, yes. The, just that virtual box there. Yep. yep. Um, the Docker image, that's just a template that um, our other master product manager, Gerald Vinzel, has put together. Um, you'll download the installed media for Oracle or grab the XE and, and throw the into Docker, which is nice if you've already got Docker containers running for your other databases, Oracle plays nicely into that infrastructure. And then we have a completely free version of the Database Express Edition. So that's based on 18C. It's got most of the features enabled. It's completely free to use for both learning and also for whatever else you want to to do. So that, that's probably the easiest ways to get started. And of course, we always have live sql.oracle.com uh, where you can sign in and have a little sandbox to play with. All right. So once you have this tool, once you have your data you want to import, and once you have a place to put it, there's a couple different ways you can get started. So if you have an existing table, so over here on the left, we see where it says wine ratings. Um, if you right click there, um, there's a, a item on the context menu that'll say import data. But if you right click on the tables node, you can also say uh, import data. Go ahead, go ahead and go to that next slide, that's fun. Um, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna create a new table in the database based on the file that we point to. And we have a couple different file formats you can use, uh, CSV or delimited. Uh, that's probably the fastest way to go. You can also use an Excel file. The bigger Excel files get, the fatter they get, deep dirty, deep dirty secret. Excel files are just tons of XML dumped in together and parsing that's not exactly fun. So if you have a really big Excel file, my advice is to convert it to CSV. Um, but we do support Excel. In here, if you're creating a new table, the biggest problem I run into 
um, and Charlie's data set had like 135,000 entries in it. So that was a lot of wine drinking that we're gonna base this research talk there, on. Yeah. A lot of research, which makes the machine learning algorithms quite accurate. I would say that's a good uh, statistical base to, to come from. So where it says preview row limit 100, bump that up much higher, bump that up to about 10,000. So what SQL developer does as we parse the file, we take a peek at those rows to guess the column sizes for the attributes in the CSV that you're about to import. So, Actually, that's a good trick, Jeff, because I always forget to do that, and I get further on and it says error, 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 and then yeah. <laughs> so that you can prevent. So first of all, let me say, you should have a proper data model versus just willy nilly shoving data into a table. Now, what happens usually is uh, you'll get a requirement to build an app or a data or a, a some sort of. Uh, solution and they want it today and that doesn't really provide a lot of time for proper data modeling and so you just shove it into the table and you fix it later so if if, if you go what charlie's done and just load the data and you get the failures at the end of this scenario you'll have a script of the insert statements that failed and then you can go back into your table and resize the columns properly and run that script again and get the missing data in what i would love for you to do is pick up a data modeling tool investigate these attributes, maybe normalize the data, because this is going to throw it all in one table. And as you can see in the preview behind, there's some repeated values there, like varieties. Maybe instead of Malbec, that should say variety 106, which points to a varieties table. Um, but, uh, you know, the denormalization or the normalization of the data in the Oracle database, that's a whole nother hour topic. But we will make it very easy to shove this data in. Um, now, the other thing is there's 130,000 rows in this table. If that were 130 million rows, you can still use SQL Developer. But what I advise you do um, is instead of using the insert method, um, there's a screen in here where you can set it to SQL Loader. So if you only have client access to your database, you can use the Oracle client tools, which includes a SQL Loader utility. That SQL Developer will build a mapping of the CSV file to a SQL Loader scenario, and it'll run Gosh, it could run 3,000 times faster than batching insert statements like SQL Dev is going to do. If you have database level access, there's an even cooler trick that we can help you with, and that's setting up external tables. So the beauty of external tables is you have these CSV files on the database machine itself. And as you dump those files in there, those external tables can you know, basically immediately access that data just as a, as a regular table. Um, but for quick and dirty playing with stuff, th this utility works just fine. Sorry, next slide. I feel like Larry, next slide, please. So here's our data as it's come in. Um, I actually will take a few seconds in my SQL dev and I'll do two things to make this data easier to, to work with, because after a while your eyes just start to bleed <laughs> from staring. So I'll go into the preferences. And I will bump the font size up. So if you go to preferences, code editor, fonts, you can change both the font itself. So I like to choose a font where zeros and the letter O and ones and the letter I or L are very distinguishable. And I'll use a character set, or I'll use a font that supports the character set in play. So I don't see like the weird boxes. I'll actually see the umlauts on the characters. Or uh, if you're using emojis, like the wine emoji or the beer emoji, those can display correctly. Um, so I'll bump the font up. I'll use a font that looks nice. And then there's also an option in there to use a zebra pattern um, or an alternating background color scheme. So these rows, instead of black on white text, you can have um, black on alternating background colors, which I think helps with the, the eye string quite a bit. Um, you can also right click on the grid and do a row count. Uh, just to make confirm that your, your data came in as expected. And if you do, like me, um, get a little bit OCD and you start to go, oh my gosh, this isn't third normal form, um, you can right click on the table and there's a context menu that for the columns. And I could say pick a column. I could pick a column like province or variety 
or winery, and I can say normalize, and SQL Developer will set up a script to automatically create a new table, create a foreign key, and bring that data over and replace them with the ID values that coordinate with the new uh, tables. And everything Charlie's going to show going forward is based on this one table, but he could easily do it on two or three tables linked together instead of just the one. I think that was the all I was going to say for here. So after yep. kind of bringing the data in, we can use SQL Worksheet to run some of the different statistical functions within the database. So there's nearly 400 different statistical functions you can go and use. Is there kind of graphing capabilities within SQL Developer people can use, Jeff? All kinds of uh, what I call eye candy that we could help you with. So if you're new to SQL, we have a query builder where you can drag and drop tables in and, and, and draw the lines and we'll turn that into SQL for you. Uh, if you just want to visualize your data, um, we have a full reporting component. So you can start with a select star from and say, okay, now give me a pie chart or a bar chart or gosh, one of those more interesting math related charts that I couldn't depend, you know, even start playing with. But uh, if you look, on the view menu, there's gonna be an item there that says reports, and there's something called a user-defined report. And the more interesting your SQL is, the more reportings, or the more interesting reports you can, you can spit out of there. Um, you could also build REST services, which we're gonna talk about later, and feed a JSON stream from the, um, from the database directly into your HTML5 apps and use your favorite uh, JavaScript framework to, to visualize the stuff. Um, or if you're a low code fan and you want to stay in the Oracle database completely, you know, uh, Apex has a supremely rich uh, charting component library. And I think they even support the Oracle Jet um, charting components and they make it very easy to take this data directly into a, into a web report with charts and graphs. So the answer to your question is yes, we do. Yes, you do. So, so we can do, you know, say whether you're a developer, a data scientist or machine learning person, you can use SQL Developer to do a lot of your, your work. So it's kind of like we take that, we've loaded data in, we've explored it, we've visualized it, we've run some statistics on it. Kind of the next thing we need to do now is start looking at, can I actually build some of the machine learning algorithms to be able to uh, see any insights or uh, any, any particular behavior within the data? So Charlie, do you want to bring us through some of the machine learning features in the database? Sure, uh, thanks. Yeah, um, by the way, so, so we're gonna cover Oracle Machine Learning, and just so you know, uh, it's changed its name recently. Um, a, a small point of trivia or whatever, I guess, would be that it used to be called a few other different names. One was originally Oracle Data Mining, but then most recently it's been called the Oracle Advanced Analytics Option. And, um, and so in the Oracle Machine Learning uh, offering, as I said before, it's included in every enterprise edition or autonomous edition of the database. And we have, um, we basically extend the database to uh, allow you to apply a, a set of 30 something algorithms, uh, ultimately to build uh, AI applications, smarter analytics uh, dashboards. Um, and we integrate with open source Python and uh, well, it's coming in the near, few, uh, very near small number of weeks. And we currently inter integrate with R. So in this, we're gonna today focus mostly on the Oracle Machine Learning for SQL, because that's what the core native, when you come right down to it, that's what the, you know, the algorithms are. They're all implemented by uh, developers as C code in the database, like all the rest of the database code, but they're surfaced and exposed as um, SQL functions. And we use PL SQL procedures to build the models. And then the models once built are, are uh, first class objects. You can just apply them. Uh, Brendan could build one, hand it off to me, and I could uh, apply it if he gave me prints, things like that. So we're gonna focus mostly on the Oracle data miner because that's the easiest and most popular um, way to access these algorithms. And there's a hands-on lab that you can follow on that. But we've also added in the option for you to use the autonomous database, which is a slightly different user interface. It's called the Oracle Machine Learning Notebooks. So, um, so we're gonna cover this whole thing, but I, I did wanna point out that we support a few different languages. We support SQL, we support R. In the very coming short number of weeks, we're, we're, we're supporting Python. And then we also have a set of algorithms that run outside the database that, that run uh, in the Spark environment, and it's Oracle OML for Spark. So we have a number of different languages uh, supported. And the algorithms that we support is, is quite an extensive list. Now, some hardcore data scientists that's, you know, just opened, you know, installed the latest 
packages, you know, R, 5,000 packages and more from R and from Python, similar and so on. You might say, well, where's this package I just downloaded in the open source community? Uh, it's quite popular there. Well, we have what we think are pretty much um, the, 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 the most popular, uh, the most used algorithms and techniques um, inside the database implemented as parallelized implementations of algorithms. So they're like power tools. And so in classification, there's about six, seven or eight in there. In the 20C, the next release of the database, we're adding XG Boost, which is a very popular technique that uh, has uh, been used to win a lot of Kaggle competitions. But uh, one thing I like to point out in, in, in showing this is that um, I think some of the more powerful things are in the fine print down at the bottom. If I want to make a predictive model of which wine is going to be the best wine, wine but I want to partition it by country, or I want to build a model that's going to predict who's going to win the next election, and I want to partition it by uh, state or region or county, that's just a partition by clause. If I want to do all that, you know, transactional data that, that we were talking about before, there's a transactional data for, let's say, the medications I'm on or the purchases I make at, a, at an online retailer, I want to join that into my uh, profile before I go do my mining. I can bring that in uh, and use aggregations and join that. So I have a, what we call a nested table. And similarly, if you have unstructured data, I always joke that if marital status is not single married divorce, it's actually a paragraph or it's a legal document or something. Well, we use Oracle text under the hood to tokenize all that data and bring in a bag of words. So there's a little, these are not just sort of standard algorithms. They are in database uh, implementations of algorithms that then share and benefit from all the rest of the databases, you know, wonderful features and functions like, you know, security, parallelism, uh, backup, uh, encryption, all of that is all in play. Under the hood, they're running, if you read SQL, hopefully a few of you are comfortable with, with the SQL, this is what they're running you know, sort of under the hood. Begin DBMS data mining, create model. Uh, there's two different ways of doing that. There's a create model and a create model two, where I don't have to have the settings table. That's probably more more uh, expedient way of doing this. Um, but uh, it's, it's essentially the exact same thing. But I have a model name, wine class model. I'm doing a mining function, DBMS data mining classification. Uh, table that I'm going to use could be a table review, the wine train data. Uh, the target field is going to be point spin and so on. So then once I've built the model, it's just a query. And so what we're trying to do is, is walk through this methodology and solve this problem. And before we get out of here, we're, we're going to find a good, good cheap bottle of wine, right? And uh, then we'll build an application on that. So as Brendan alluded to before, there's this very popular, very high level. It's so high level, it's, you can't argue with it, right? It just says, before you go out and do anything, you got to think about what's your problem you're going you're gonna to try and tackle. What data do you have? What data preparation do you need to do? Like, we're going we're gonna to take the point spin. In, th in this particular case, we have a bunch of data about wine from Kaggle. And one of the uh, things that they have is how many points is the wine? And I don't know, I've never bought a bottle of wine less than, I don't know, high 80s, I guess, but I, I guess they maybe go down to the 60s. I don't even know. Uh, but you want to get, if, you're, if, you, if you want a good bottle of wine, you generally want something. How far, down, how low do they go? I don't know. I but think they, they go down, I think they go down a little bit closer to $6. No, 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 the, the, the number of points. Oh, I was going to say two buck chuck is two points. dollars. Yeah, no, there yeah. was three buck chuck uh, before they used to have, right? That so, wine have a score lower than sixty. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 you, so, I always try to get a bottle of wine that's ninety points and above. But even those, they're they're not always that good, and and many of them they're not rated either. So, what we're going to do is use a bunch of this Kaggle historical data, and we've binned the field wine points into above ninety points and below ninety points, kind of using that as a separator. And then in that, we've set up our business understanding. We've set up our problem statement. There's a lot of different things you do in the courts of being a data scientist. And I, and I do think there's a lot of Oracle data professionals that can kind of uh, move into this role of uh, Oracle data scientist because it's so straightforward. And when you do that, there are, you, can get, you can get overwhelmed. There's so many different things you do. There's so many buzzwords and all that. But the good news uh, is, is I think we've spent a lot of time and effort trying to automate things. So all the things I'm going to highlight in red you can just take the system defaults. They're just automated. You don't have to really think about these things if you don't want to. If you want to, when you're a power user, and you can say, what are you doing under the hood there? Um, you can go twiddle with those things, but we will give you very good uh, automated handling these things. So you really only have to look at the ones in black, a well-defined business problem, assemble the right data. Maybe you want to do some derived variables, like we did the, the wine binning from you know good wines, not so good wines, and so on. And then at the end, we're going to cover the deployment. So here I've got a few slides, but I'm just going to go over the live product and hopefully nothing breaks on me. And I'm going to go over here. I guess you should never say that. Hope not that it's going to break on me. Um, but I'm going to go over here and say, okay, here is a blank Oracle. I've got too many different floating windows around here, but Jeff already showed you before how we got from SQL developer 
and I go up here in SQL Developer and just say Oracle Data Miner. So there I, there I am, I'm, I'm already over here, so I'm in the Data Miner thing, and over here, I have these floating windows that keep on kind of getting in the way. I have these, um, these workflows. Now what I'm gonna try and do is build this, but I'm not gonna build the whole thing because I'm gonna have to wait for everything to run. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning and show you just how you get started. So I'm gonna click on these components that are over here, and I drag that over here, and I say, I need some data. Well, it's gonna look at all the data that I, Charlie Berger, data scientist, have access to. And here's a bunch of different data here. And I've got some weight data down here. It's this wine ratings data. Now I've got another one called wine reviews that has text descriptions of the wine from wine reviewers. So if we have a chance, I'm gonna show that too. But um, we just run this through, we look at the, we, we have our data and now we can view that data like that. So here's the, 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 the points. This one right here is where I wanna bin that into greater than 90 points and less than 90 points. And I have the columns and I have the SQL. So, so far, everything is still in the database and it will never leave the database and everything I'm gonna show you, it's, it's still completely in the database. Now to Brendan's point, he was asked about graph in SQL Developer and in the Oracle Data Miner module of SQL Developer, um, you have this ability to explore the data. And when I go off to do something, it's gonna calculate all these things. So we've added in all these SQL functions so I can, um, uh, do averages, min, max, skewness, kurtosis, these are all things I can do. And I am gonna also group this by points bin because I've done, done this binning, I already have it in here. I did that earlier on just to kind of make this run really, really smoothly and quickly for the purposes of this webinar. And by the way, I've taken this finished workflow and I've put it out on the blog. So I'll show you where the blog links are. I think Steve already has those up on your, um, on the, on the Ask Tom, on, you know, on the da database happy hour uh, uh, website or whatever. But if I come into here and I view this, I can see the country and I've got it bin by, in this case, I'm calling good wines number two and bad wines are less than nine. They're not necessarily bad, they're drinkable, right? But they're less than 90. So if I come into here and look at some of the data, uh, I can look at it, uh, but if I hold down the, um, the, the control, you know, control key and then mouse, I can see different kind of things over here. So I get to visualize the data. I can also see the data in its tabular form over here. And there's the SQL behind the scenes that's being used to do all that. So I'm kind of off to the start here. The next thing I might want to do is this filter columns. Now it's not necessarily required, but it's a good thing to do. And I'm going to go over here, but just to save a little bit of time, I'm going to cut over to the one, um, this one over here that I've already done. And I wanted to show a couple other different things. I did this transforming right here where I did the transforming and I turned it into a transform bin. So I have less than, that's just a little binning kind of function there. Notice that, that I have fewer good wines, they're harder to find than the other wines. I've also taken- Histograms, are these histograms real? Or are they, or are they like- uh, what, do you mean, <laughs> what do you mean they're real? What are you drinking over there? Well, I'm all out. That, 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 that seems very powerful, powerful, that, powerful that, that it immediately just throw, throw in, in based on the based data. On the data. Yeah, that's what we do because because they're just it's just running SQL. It's like a sort statement. It's like, can you sort? Yeah. Well, in order to do those histograms, we're just doing a um, we scan the whole table. We find the min, the max. We divide it up into whatever. We just got to do, do that. You 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 do that. I just I just bought this from Ken. Ken, like it's like three thousand thousand pages on how to do the complicated SQL. This yeah, just like magic. breaking up. You're breaking up really badly on my system. I don't know if everyone's get, ever else get, is getting the same kind of feedback, but but I can I can I can hear what you're saying, but it's coming in real garbled on my system. Uh, uh, so I'm just saying, just saying something like easy. easy. One of the things to for for people uh, watching to note is that behind each of these nodes, it's just some SQL and PL SQL being run in the database. Yeah, if you go over here and you say save the SQL or show the SQL, copy SQL to clipboard or whatever, it's it's for yeah. each node. It's sort of computer generated SQL there. Yeah. So, so I mean, that's, I think, uh, I think to Jeff's point, that's, I think, the real excitement about what we're trying to share today with this converged database. If you think of how you, if you've brought, you know, in the old school, and I call Python and, and, and R and some of these things almost legacy uh, machine learning plat, uh, products because they're legacy architectures that requires you to move the data somewhere else. If you could take and somehow magically have, those packages, you know, those those languages run in a, in a peer equivalent to SQL inside the database. Um, that's almost what we've done, except we've done it the other way around. We built the algorithms from the inside out, and then we expose them by their native tongue, SQL, but also we integrate and expose them to the other tongues, R, Python, and then also different various GUIs and such. But yeah, it, it just opens up a lot of doors. So I've done this. Uh, I'm going to continue on here. Um, I've, I've done this where I've taken the description, which is a bunch of, uh, actually in another scenario, I treat that as clob data, but I'm gonna take and turn that off. 
I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna run something called attribute importance, which is really just going up here and saying, I would like to say for the target field points bin, good one, not so good one, greater than 90 points or not, uh, show me the top uh, attributes that most drive it. But I'm also gonna ask it to do some data quality, kind of some data profiling here. And because the data is unbalanced, I wanna actually ask it to do some system determined sampling so it can detect, ah, oh, it's an unbalanced set of data, I wanna do stratified sampling. So I've done that. I've actually already, whoops, I already, already ran that, but I forgot to show something else over here. Notice we also give you these little hints over here, exceeds the number of percent uniques and things like that. And if I want to, I could, let's see, if I do this right, I do uh, control A, yeah, light them all up. And then over, over here I have this apply the recommended output settings. So it's gonna turn on or off these different attributes here. Now I clearly wanna have ID carry forward because that's, I need to know which wine it is, but, but those are some features we can get into. And there's a lot of other things up here. You can even do this um, attribute importance with, with no with no target field up here, right? None, and that does an unsupervised learning attribute importance. Very exciting stuff, but we don't have time to go into that. So now, once I've run that, I can get the results down here, and they are now just a table. The attribute importance and the rankings and such, and so Brendan or Jeff or some smart application guy might wanna just take that and put that up on a dashboard or something. But we're gonna continue on. We're gonna say, okay, now I wanna build some models, and all I've really done is I've taken this model Note over here, I've dropped it down, I connected this to that, that kind of thing here, but I'm just gonna, and then what it does is it asks me what I wanna do. I'm gonna say the target field is points bin and the unique identifier is going to be, I guess, ID. And then I can do sampling, I can put on stratified, you know, automated detection of that. I have different inputs and, and the, the design, let's say the designation was the description. Let's say that's what it was. And I could come over here and I could say, make that actually text. Because we remember in the beginning, I said we also support um, text. So uh, regardless of whether or not you have, you know, as I said a few different times, this, to, in order for you to run this, all you need is the Oracle database, Enterprise Edition, and SQL Developer. And you just enable or install, you know, configure the Oracle Data Miner. And on Autonomous, you just need an Autonomous database, period, right? Because the Oracle Machine Learning Notebooks, I'll show in a minute, come with that. So I'm going to get out of this one right here. Do I save the changes? No, because I've already done it. I'm just gonna cut that guy out of here to save time. And this notebook that I have, this workflow that I have here is up on the blog, but I'm gonna come in here and set, show you what we've already done. We've built the different models. They also, by the way, um, they are, there's a bunch of model evaluation techniques here. So I can do ROC, performance matrices, um, and, and look at each different thing and see how accurate each model is. And what I always like to look at is the lift chart. Do I get a good lift? And, Brendan can talk more about this maybe, uh, or all of us, I guess, but there's a lot of model evaluation techniques you, you might wanna to use to decide just what is the best model. But from my point of view, each of these models is a pretty good model. Like it's a much higher, this is the naive guess is what we call it, and this is the improved accuracy that you get by using a predictive model that has sort of studied the data, found patterns, and so on. So when you view the models, what's kind of fun here is, I can view the models in various different model visualization techniques and one of the ones that's really popular is the decision tree because the decision tree allows me to kind of see all these sort of if then rules and I'm looking for the ones that are green so green means good in my in my use case right here so if the country is Austria Canada blah 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 and this and that that it's pretty good wine but notice this little the very first sort is that if I come over here I have different each one of these will give me different sort of rules and depending on which algorithm I'm using I'll have different rules here but I always like showing this one too because the support vector machine shows me the coefficients. So if I'm looking for greater than 90 points, I see all the coefficients here and I can see you know, the varieties and how much, these are like the, the pieces of evidence, the weight of, you know, the, um, the importance of each one of those. And, and I don't have time to show this, but I did do the same thing where I used the unstructured data and I built a model there. So now what's kind of fun here, at least fun for me, um, is when I come into here and look at the, um, models in this case, I am using the unstructured data. So all the reviewers have said, oh, this is a very robust, and notice it's taking a little longer to call it up on my laptop because there's a lot of text uh, in this model. Um, but it's gonna say, oh, um, for the value of one, uh, these are the factors that most uh, are associated. If you see this on the description, it says rich, long, complex, years, elegant, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and also this region here, these are all the factors that if you see these, these are good things. Right, these are what the, the, the machine learning algorithms, including the unstructured data, you know, have discovered all these patterns. 
Brendan, do you want to comment on anything here? Sorry, no, you can work away. But okay. if, we, if, if we want to sound smart at a tasting, we know what words to use now. Exactly. I hadn't thought about that, but yeah, exactly. I should write that down. <laughs> and, what word, and what words not to use. Yes. Like, yes, acid, I, I, like acidic, bitter crap. Yeah, I'll have a thin, words. acidic wine, yeah. please. It, it, wouldn't, yeah. it wouldn't go over well, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so if you had a little application, like a, an app like on your phone, you, you can check out the wine, you can see all the different properties for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and here's the generalized linear model. It's, we support ridge regression for all the you know, data scientists. Uh, there, there's a number of different features and functions here, but yeah, there's, there's different ways to view the models. We give you that kind of uh, information. And we also did this, I've done this in collaboration with Jeff and, and, and Brendan. I've also done it in collaboration with uh, David Peake for Application Express, but also Francesco Tissot from another partner who uses uh, Oracle Analytics Cloud at the very end and kind of takes all those results. So we're gonna get moving along here because I'm watching the clock tick by. But at the end of this, once we've built and picked out a good model, and I guess I should show this down here, there should be properties down here at the bottom. So if I did that right, I moved that way, way down to here. And so now I can see kind of what I've done for this picking a good one. I've got a few different models here that I've been playing around with. And I've also done this 60-40 split. So it's done all that, it's calculated all, calculated all these different things here, right? So I've built the model, I've picked one, I come into here and I say, I want a prediction probability and I also want the prediction details. So I've picked the support vector machine for, you know, because I thought it was the best model. And when I view the results here, these are just in the database. They're in, they're in the table in the database. And if I pick a wine, let's see, I'm gonna take the 71% likelihood bottle of wine and it costs me, what's the price? Price is, uh, oh, it's missing on that one. Here's one that's, um, uh, I don't know, uh, here's one that's 35% uh, likely to be a good bottle of wine, it's $55, that's not good. Just below it, I have this, here's a bargain, 72% likely to be good, and it's a $12 bottle of wine. So I might wanna say, why is that wine likely to be good? And if I click on this, one of the things we provide are, are what's called prediction details. And this tries to tell you the reasons why the algorithm thinks that's a good wine. So that's kind of it, there's way more that we can cover there. Um, I did want to, Go back to the slides, I think. Make sure I covered this and then turn it over to the, to I think Brendan next. But we've done that, we've looked at the data, we've looked at the attribute importance, we've built the models, looked at the lift charts, looked at a decision tree, we've looked at the uh, results, including the unstructured data, and we've also um, gotten our predictions here. But what it's doing under the hood is it just built, if I build a model, and apply the model, I would run this live, but I've got it over in SQL Developer. I would just run it, it'll take like a, a minute to run through, so we're gonna skip that. But that's all it really is, right? Create a model, apply the model, and I have the, I don't have the create model too, I should probably update that where I don't need to have this model settings table, I can just kind of explicitly say, I wanna use the support vector machine or whatever, uh, and that's what it's doing. Um, but wait, there's more, and the more is, there's also these notebooks. And for the notebook, I'm just gonna show you the teaser. This is for your hands-on labs. If I can find it over here. Here is, oh, it logged out on me. But it is the notebook um, for this that we were talking about. Here's this, and you can, and the, the other, I think, kind of exciting thing is you can do all this in this hands-on lab. This is all in the always free tier. So the one, and I'm gonna run out of time here, so I'm gonna uh, probably just launch this thing and then come back to it if we have time. He's gonna open this guy up. He's gonna call up that notebook that I was showing before. If we have time, I can come back to that. But this is all just packaged with the autonomous database. So as I said before, you only need the autonomous database here, and that's even always free. At this point, I think I'm gonna turn over to Brendan. Yeah, or so so once we have developed the machine learning model, we can start using like simple select statements to be able to call that model and being able to do predictions on, on new data. Um, and one of the, kind of like a fantastic product that, that Oracle has is like Apex is, is that what you can do is you can start building applications on, on top of that data and on top of that machine learning model and using the capabilities within Apex, next, if you go on to the next slide, um, is that we can you know, start uh, generating lots of different uh, inputs onto it, you know, being able to select it. If you go on to the next one, we can start doing charts uh, uh, and well, you're talking about this one here, I think, Brendan. Yeah, I, I it's often, 
Yeah, so it'll get, you know, like these two slides kind of show examples of the different types of charts you can have. You can have it very interactive and, you know, you can access that from your tablet, from your phone or, or any device that can access the, the, the URL to be able to access Apex. All the data remains in the database, all the machine learning stays in the database, all the code remains in the database and it's a nice and simple uh, way of being able to utilize all of this kind of the idea of the converged database all, all kind of working together. So if you just move on like another slide or two. Uh, this is actually Oracle Analytics Cloud just briefly. Is what just an, I mean there's a plethora of different ways to access data that's in the database. This is yet another one and you can sift and slice and dice. Okay. So so the next slide. This one? No, the next one. Okay. So another way to do, to look on it is that well when we start working with you know, the machine learning models is that we have lots of ways of being able to access the data. So being able to access the, the machine learning. If you're, you know, a, an Oracle database developer, it's like using SQL is actually really simple, but, you know, not necessarily every developer or every data scientist within your organization, you know, may want to use SQL. So how can we actually give them access to the database and to the machine learning uh, uh, models to do scoring and build up our applications on it is we can use you know ORDs and then being able to build up you know kind of uh, REST APIs on this. There's um there's three different ways we can do it. So the first hey, one is Brendan? what is first REST? one is using SQL. Brennan, what does REST mean? What is that? So it's to do with a represents representational state transfer. So, all right. Good thing to know. Um, so we're, we're going to come on to an example of, of, of some of this in, over, over the next kind of few slides. So, you know, if, if you want to write SQL to be able to set these up, you can, you know, they're, they're not exactly easy statements to do, or maybe they, they are for some people. Though, or alternatively, what you can do is you can use some of the interfaces that are available in SQL Developer or in Apex. So they have like little kind of uh, template screens uh, that will actually bring you to how to to actually create them. So over the next kind of couple of slides, so Charlie, if you want to kind of just kind of slightly click through on them, is if it gives you some kind of screenshots of you know of using SQL Developer to be able to uh, create them. So when you see your when you log into your your uh, schema in SQL Developer, if you just scroll down past tables, you'll see REST Data Services. You click into that, you right click and you can start creating your different modules and, and templates and your different APIs. So if you just go on a, another slide or so. So here's an example of some of the, the REST APIs that I've, I've created on, on top of the, the Wine data set and using the machine learning model that uh, the Charlie created in, in the workflow. So it's there embedded in the database. Um, so it's, it's quite easy to do. So if you just click on there, um, if, if you don't want to be able to use that or if you're kind of working with Apex is that uh, you can also go in and use their interface to be able to uh, create your REST API. So you just go on to the next slide there. So very simple kind of cl click through on it is just, you know, you, you know from the SQL worksheet, worksheet menu, click on RESTful services. Once you click on that, just next click, Charlie. You'll get a little kind of uh, pop up going like, do you want to enable the schema? You basically go, yep, yeah, you just go ahead and, and do it. And it's all enabled within a kind of a, a second for you. And then you can start using the, like the little form to, to the little template to be able to go along and create some simple uh, uh, REST APIs on it. It comes with some templates for you initially. So it's quite easy to kind of uh, get an idea of how to do it. So if you haven't done it before, and then once you've done that, you can go along and create uh, your own ones based on uh, what is actually being provided. So if you click on to the next one there, Charlie. So, oh, I was expecting a different slide. But what you can do then is once you've created these, you, you get a URL uh, which points to the code. Um, and and the, the code behind that is effectively just a select statement, or you could put in a PL SQL bit of code to be able to run it. And what each one of these is doing, or the URL that's kind of shown here, is that uh, it takes the machine learning model, it takes the data that I'm going to pass into it. 
So the data doesn't necessarily have to live in the database, this could be in my application, I can give it to whatever developers, here's an example of, of using uh, Python, to be able to use the REST API, take some data from my application, you know, feed it into the machine learning model in the database and bring me back the result that's actually displayed on. So here's an example of, of taking uh, two different uh, characteristics of uh, of a wine, it's Portuguese, it's from a particular area, it's red. One of them has a price of, of $30, the other one has $31. Which one is good? Which one you know, might be better than, than, the, than the other one? And what we see here in the example of, well, by paying maybe one extra dollar, you know, we have a better chance of, of getting uh, a much better wine to be able to test. So this is a way of being able to share the machine learning um, with everybody. Uh, within our organization, whether they're you know, developers of no matter what language they're, they're using, they can easily integrate the, this machine learning into their front ends, into their, into their production applications. Uh, That's the beauty of HTTP, right? You can, yeah. you can call it from anywhere. So if you you're new, if you're brand new to this and it's well all over your head on the REST side, just simply go to oracle.com slash REST, R-E-S-T, That'll take you to the product page for awards, and we have getting started videos and hands-on labs and, and, and more basic examples. Um, yeah, so, so that was going to be my next question for the two of you is kind of like, if people want to learn more about all of this, where can they go to? And I, and I think you have a slide with, with some links and, and tips on that, don't you? I, I think we might. Um, so, so, so anyway, at the end, thank you for all, you know, this is, the, you're, you're all now officially, you know, knighted Oracle data scientist. There, there is no redeemable value for this uh, per se, but we wanted to make you uh, feel uh, uh, that it was worthwhile dialing in here. Hope you learned something. There is a bunch of quizzes. Um, you can get a certificate of achievement, I think, for, for tuning into the six, six hours of these uh, courses. And we have a few simple questions. We've teased out the answers to those questions during the course of this um, uh, webinar. And so you can go follow up that and, and, and have some fun. There's all these, also these hands-on lab that are out there. And um, the links are on the Ask Tom database happy hour page. Uh, and there's three or four different things there. There's, there's this one starting at the top that is the wine notebook, which is the one I was trying to show earlier. I won't go over there, but it's a whole notebook. And that notebook itself, you can download off the web page and open it up into your autonomous database. You have to go get the data from Kaggle, but we have the link to that as well. Um, that was one of the questions, Charlie. Someone wanted to know where to get the wine data. Wine yeah, data. It's, it's, on, it's on the... Uh, what's, uh, what's, ca what's Kaggle? Is that like, oh, a, is that like, a, tick, is, um, is that like a TikTok thing? <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> Uh, Kaggle is a, I guess it's right here. So, um, by the way, here is the, here's that notebook you're going to, you're going to build. So it's absolutely gorgeous, right? And we do good things. And at the end, you get to celebrate with a fine bottle of fine glass of wine. But these, these blogs are, are over here. And so the one for the wine is right here. Kaggle is a, I guess it's a whole company now, but it started out as this contest. Like I've got a bunch of data who can, um, who can analyze this data and get the best uh, value out of it. So say somebody, uh, a Toyota might put some data out about car crashes. Who could predict what is uh, the factors that are driving car crashes? And I'll give the winner $10,000. I'm going like to guess it was wine, probably. Probably was. It probably was. Yeah. But so we have the, uh, uh, oh, I uploaded this last night and it has not refreshed. So stay tuned. This will come back and refresh in here. That did not. Uh, is that Kaggle with a K? Yeah, K A G G L E. So, so this joint, this so Google Kaggle and Wine, and you'll get. Yeah, the you know, I also have it in here. If you open up the notebooks, you'll get it. If you follow the whole thing, that we also have it in here. We just made it even more explicit. It's right here, Kaggle, K A G G, L E. So that's where you get the data from. It's in the notebook, but I also posted it on the blog last night, and apparently it hasn't been pushed out on the on the thing yet. So anyway, there are a bunch of links here, up to here, and we're back to here, and showing that so there's the one if you want to use the autonomous the other one is using the um what we showed mostly the oracle data miner uh extension to sql developer um, and that has um a bunch of oracle machine learning tutorials from oracle you know oracle by example oracle university yeah, yeah. there's another uh workshop that's very good on, on this link and that's again out on your autonomous i mean on your ask tom page that takes you into more exotic uh, blown out um, a very well documented uh, tutorial, which is what this one is going to become. We just couldn't get it quite ready for you in time for, for now, but there'll be a new version of that. 
this uh, down here on this uh, GitHub. Uh, and it's a full, you know, um, step by step uh, sequence of what you do. And then recently I put out sort of a version of this presentation, but a little bit more uh, content about around the edges and a bunch of other things. And there's a YouTube that if you click on this or just search Oracle machine learning burgers, you'll probably find it. There's a, there's a sort of a YouTube version of all this. So there's a lot of resources. All the links to these are out on the um, page. And as uh, everyone has said along the way, if you want to, uh, do the um, the resources uh, like in SQL Developer? It's going to point you to this this pre-built developer, and that's what you would use for the Oracle Data Miner drag and drop GUI uh, SQL Developer a hands-on lab. Uh, there um, is more information on SQL Developer here, and they're nicely. I don't know if you noticed, but Oracle spends a lot. Oracle.com/slash SQL Developer. Um, Oracle Machine Learning. I didn't get the rest one on here because I was copying and pasting frantically, but I think it's the same thing. Oracle.com/slash rest. Yeah, I figured it was. I just was in a hurry. We try to make it easy. <laughs> yeah, I made it hard. Sorry. Um, and and then the machine learning slash machine learning, and then um, thank you uh, from from all of us. 